introduce you, introduce the channel, introduce what we're doing. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> so this is the Homestead Bandwagon, and we're real excited today. We got a tiller for tilling. That means chopping up the ground and making it into dirt. You're supposed to talk with your hands, too. I usually do, but since I'm on camera, my hands are in my pockets. You just gotta pretend you're, what's his name, and that you're hanging out with Toby Dog. I don't wanna be that guy. <laughs> excited can you tell I can tell what are you excited about that this is a tiller and that we will till up the ground for me to plant flowers we've been waiting a whole year for this tiller to show up I've been waiting my whole life I, I ordered this tiller I just did the math a year ago one year ago yep and here it is it's good that you didn't tell me until just like a few weeks ago because <laughs> how much how, how many times have I bugged you in that few weeks to see if you know when the tiller is going to come. Many times. <laughs> <laughs> so this one matches the tractor. It's blue. It's called MRT 3072. It is made in Italy by, remember what the company name is? Sigma. There's three major manufacturers of stuff like tillers and, and uh, grass cutters in Italy. And Sigma is one of them. The other one's... Start with an M, Mashio, and then there's a third one. I don't know. What I think they start with an S too. I don't know what they're called though. So this is one of them. So it's a uh, Italian tiller, branded by a Korean company, sold to American people like you and me. <laughs> and the instructions don't tell us anything about how to set it up, so we're just going to figure it out and see how it goes. Okay, so we got our tools, and we got some grease, and we got uh, a tiller. We're going to try to set it up here. Uh, the instructions that came with this thing weren't so good, um, at least for how to put it together. They were kind of non-existent, but they did say to put the PTO shaft on before putting the PTO shaft shield on. So I got a PTO shaft right here, and we'll put that on, then we'll put the shield on, then we'll put the, uh, the frame for the uh, three-point on here, and then we'll put it on the tractor. Um, PTO shafts you're supposed to measure before you install. Um, okay, I kind of eyeballed this one, but it's supposed to be pre-cut for this tractor. The other problem with this tractor is on the back, maybe you can see it, I've got a Pat's quick hitch kit on there that adds like three inches or so, so we might be a little off. We might have to take the Pat's off, which is okay, but let's see what we can do. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is uh, get out our grease gun here. And I'm going to grease the shaft up a little bit. Um, I don't know. Somebody will probably tell me it's the wrong thing to do. But I think if you grease it up, it attaches easier. And if it's clean when you grease it, and then you put the uh, PTO shaft on this guy, um, we don't have to worry about dirt getting in. And it can help keep dirt out. Okay. PTO shaft. This is a uh, slip clutch on this PTO shaft. So this clutch will spin if uh, you hit something hard. So it's supposed to protect the tractor. Um, so we're supposed to shove this guy on there and tighten these bolts. It's funny, the instructions didn't say much about how to set this up, but they did talk a lot about this uh, slip clutch and how if uh, and how it's supposed to be preset from the factory to have the right tension. So this thing will spin if you um, hit too much resistance. Um, they say it's preset from the factory and that you're not supposed to adjust it, but if it spins too easily, you can tighten it by tightening these nuts um, for maintenance you want to clean these you can just spray them with WD-40 pretty regularly because they're sitting outside loosen them up a little bit and then tighten it back to where they were 
but I think it's better to have them too loose than too tight because too tight you know you hit something with your your tiller this thing won't spin and then you're hurting your tiller or your gearbox your, your gearbox on your tiller or your tractors um, innards which we generally try to avoid hurting these guys I've got to take these off first and they're glued together hold on See, if we didn't grease that, that would have been way harder to do. Slide this back a little ways. Whoops. Because the screw slides through a slot on the shaft coming out of the gearbox. Next up is these guys. These go here. Nope. They go here. This is my Nipex. Oh, that guy. Little gator gloss. Gator jaws are so handy. Gator those guys. This is a cobalt Oops. ratchet. It's a 90 tooth, which is nice. Look at this. Barely move it. Click, click, click. It's 91. I see a lot of the stuff coming out of the fancy truck that's only like 80 teeth. This one's got 90, 90 teeth on the inside. So that's like 10 better, isn't it? Okay, two more bolts. What do these do? Go up on this tower here. They gave us this and this as a top link pin. This is supposed to be a combination category two, category one pin. We've got a category one tractor. So we'll use our own top link pin because I don't know how that one works. Oh boy, that just comes right through without a washer on it or some a pin or something there. Okay, well, we gotta use the, the Italian job then. Okay. It just scares me because I feel like it's gonna just pop on out. Okay, so that goes like that, and that goes like that. And then it, once you have your top link attached there, it can't move. So, okay, little ingenuity. I'd rather use this style top link pin. Um, I'll go get a longer one and put a washer over the end. That'll work. All right, we're going to start by hooking up this PTO shaft here. And hook this PTO shaft up first. This one's got a push button on it, which I really like. When I just learned this, I can turn the PTO shaft on the tractor by flipping a little switch by the seat instead of trying to rotate this shaft, which would make the tiller turn, which is a pain. <clears throat> so 
got it pretty much on. Should have greased it more. There we go. It's in. Suck this link in a little bit because we're on our last couple of threads. A little bit of play. <clears throat> Just almost exactly as wide as the tire over here. And on that side we have a little bit extra, so that's good. farmers. So here's a fun one. Uh, I looked back, looked forward, something sounded funny, and I looked back. And my top link had backed itself out. So we're gonna hope it's not bent. Whoops! <laughs> I'm trying to reconnect it.
Okay, well it's been a couple days and it's been raining ever since we tilled. Uh, but uh, yeah, that thing did uh, did pretty good. The uh, it didn't bounce me around too much. You just that was the first time I've ever run a tiller behind a tractor. So at first I was kind of going in just a little bit and then making a second pass real deep. After a while, I just kind of put it in the ground all the way, and then anytime it started jumping or chattering or my RPMs dropped, I just slow way down. And that went pretty slow anyway, so, you know, it's uh, it's pretty easy to use. I think uh, if an amateur like me can do it, anybody can. So let's see what this stuff looks like after about two days of rain. Got some clumps, but they're pretty small. Feet sinking in, oh, maybe an inch. So I could have, I went over every part about two and a half, three times. And you could go deeper if you want, but we'll see after mowing those blackberries all year long and then tilling them. Some people say that'll make them grow more, but. We're gonna slowly start seeding in out here. This is all the way out back there. We tilled. So we'll see how it goes, but yeah, uh, pretty easy to operate. <laughs> I didn't have the easiest time putting it on, but that's on me. It was sitting at a funny angle on a on a on a uh, pallet. Oh, here's a here's another root crown. Lots of blackberries out here. Okay. Well, I'm off to work this morning, and hopefully this weekend get to play around a little bit more out here, and it won't be too bad of a mud pit. See ya.